This video contains discussions of disability, mental health, and suicide. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, my name is Danielle, I'm a writer, reader, and student, and today we are going to be talking about all of those factors and how they coincide with one another and how I feel like I am not doing enough. Well, now this is going to be like a therapy session <laughs> where I can just talk about how I'm not feeling good enough and maybe you guys can relate to it too, but I've always felt like my best isn't good enough, and in some ways I've been proven right. One event I can think of where I realized my best wasn't good enough was when I was in my high school chem class. I took that class twice. The first time I dropped out because of varying health reasons. The second time I was like determined to like actually get the shit done. And due to overwhelming health reasons, once again, I had to drop out because I got an F in that class. I put in all the work, did all I could, and I still got an F. And I got another F. I didn't even pass the first semester the second time. My teachers always told me that as long as you try your best, then that's all you can do. But my best wasn't even good enough for a C minus. And that night, thanks to a culmination of other conflicting health factors and to the overwhelming shame that I felt, I would say that F was the hair that broke the camel's back and I tried to kill myself that night. Now I tried to kill myself beforehand, but always at the last moment I would be like, oh shit, never mind, never mind, never mind, my bad, my bad, my bad. But this time though, I followed through. Now I don't talk about that night often, understandably why, because it's a difficult thing to talk about and it doesn't really come up in, um, in icebreakers. But I do think about that night often, and I learned a lot that night. One of them being that sometimes your best isn't good enough for other people. Now this is all well and good. I recognize that I'm a writer, I'm no chemist, I don't- I'm perfectly within my right to be able to write an essay. I do not need to know anything about the periodic table. I'm not a chemist, I know nothing about it, I don't need to know- I don't need to be good at chemistry. But there's a small part about that revelation that stuck with me, that sometimes your best isn't good enough. And somewhere along the line that tur that sometimes turned into a never, that your best is never good enough. And that part has- I, I don't know when this switch switched subconsciously, but it did and it has ruined me. I feel as if I am never doing enough. There's always something that I could be doing better. I'm never reading enough, I'm never publishing enough, I'm never succeeding enough. And yeah, I have been on this path of toxic pro productivity since that switch flipped in my subconscious and it has led to burnout, crying, and even more failure than I can imagine. It doesn't help that the cult of productivity is so alluring. It promises you dreams of career success, financial freedom, if only you work hard enough, if you're disciplined enough, you can find joy in the journey, etc, etc. There is always, always something that you could be doing differently. And that in culmination to my feelings of deep shame that I harbor, given to me by familial expectations, cultural expectations, gender-based expectations, Although nothing affects me like my health does. I have schizophrenia and it greatly impacts my life. Although these effects are often invisible now. I have had doctors and therapists tell me, tell me they commend me for how high functioning I am up, up, up until this point. And while I am incredibly thankful for how high functioning I am now, I wasn't always this way. And I'm incredibly grateful to be at the level of functioning I am now, but I wasn't always this way. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I have tried to kill myself. I've lost count, frankly. And now that I'm at a level where I can go outside, feel the sun against my skin, laugh alongside my friends, I do not take that for granted. I never will. When, quite frankly, the alternative is me being six feet under and never experiencing any of that again. I always wanted to prove to my younger self that we can achieve the dreams that we have despite this overwhelming impact on our lives. I, I feel this momentous amount of pressure as an ill person to become more than a statistic. I am so bitter and furious that I was handed the short end of the stick that I refuse to give up the stick entirely. Yet that anger fuels me to do better, be better, defy the odds, and be someone I am proud of. I recognize that my schizophrenia affects me most pronouncedly, but let's not forget that I'm an only child of immigrant divorced parents, I'm a woman of color, I'm a community, co I'm a community college transfer. The odds are stacked against me. <laughs> Suffice to say, I feel this insane amount of pressure to not just do enough, but be more than enough. This is not helped by the fact that I literally, as a disabled woman of color, I literally have to do 10 times more than my white, able-bodied peers. I place myself at these unachievable standards, then in inevitably disappoint myself when I'm unable to reach these arbitrary standards of success. So, how do I solve it? The truth is that I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted to get this off my chest and hopefully you guys can rec can find something to relate in it also But I will say that I am trying to do but I will say what I am trying to do in the meanwhile I think my first achievable step honestly is to just do daily aff affirmations as like gimmicky as they are uh, If you repeat it enough times your brain starts to, rem to starts to remember it So I think every morning I'm just gonna tell myself that I am good enough and that I'm proud of myself Just trying to gaslight myself a little bit 
and I'll say it aloud if I have to. That's where I'm going to start. As I'm filming this, I'm already doing a lot. I mean, like, I'm constantly making YouTube videos. I'm a published writer. I'm submitting poetry. I'm reading a lot. And I'm on podcast as a guest. And, and I've started my own podcast with Evan. I'm so proud of it. I deserve to celebrate because all I've done is not easy. I think that every month or so, I'll do a reflection where I try to remember all the good things that I've done. I can kind of internalize my success. I'll admit, it's a bit difficult to be proud of myself, um, especially when my family doesn't really care about my career, but you know what? I'm proud of myself, and that's all that matters. Because I cannot keep living like this. It's unsustainable to constantly be working and feeling guilty whenever I have a modicum of rest. Something must change. But I'm going to start small. That's part of the battle, really, that I'll make this into some sort of skill that I need to achieve or something like that. It's not, it's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be something to only help myself. So then what's the point? Because we're back at square one. If you want to hear me talk more about my schizophrenia and how it affects my writing, um, feel free to watch another podcast episode here. If you want to see more of me on my writing journey, please click on my face to subscribe. I am pi trying to post new videos every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you can find me anywhere in my socials at Danielle Mamaril. I would greatly appreciate it. And yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next week. Okay. Bye.